Hey yo guys, what's going on? It is me, KLV, and today I'm going to talk about five ways on how you can win more games in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I am currently Diamond 2 at the moment with a 1.8 ranked win loss, which is quite good to say that I haven't actually done 100 games yet. And I've only done about, I think it's 89, I think. Yeah, 89 games, 57 wins, 31 losses. I'll also be hitting champ tomorrow, so if you want to come over to my stream, I stream on Twitch. I'll be streaming over there so if you've got any questions etc go down to my twitch link is in the description down below now this is all about winning your games this has nothing to do with getting killed or getting your kd higher this is all about that win loss going from a like a 0.9 0.8 or whatever yours is to a positive so 1.2 1.3 etc so you're winning more games than you're losing so first thing is a five stacking you want to be five stacking i have about nine eight to nine people that i played with you want to do lfg posts and if you like playing with someone then just message them more often like when you're on message them etc etc or and basically make sure you do like hold your own way though when you do uh, lfgs because you don't want to just be getting carried all the time the reason why you want five stack is so that you can get call outs and that you can is that is the main reason is call outs it is the main reason you can be more precise with it so for example let's say you have a valk some, someone dies they can still not come and give you call outs call outs are life and death life and death really if you know where someone is because your teammate called it out most likely you should be able to win that it all just depends on the aim but you gave the call out that is going to help so much compared to the solo queuing where you're not getting no call outs you're having to rely all on yourself like cams on yourself everything like that you're having to do basically rely on yourself Next tip is being passionate. Now, what I mean by this is if you jump onto the game, right? And I say this in like a lot of my tip videos. If you jump on the game and you don't want to play the game, you're not having fun playing the game, you're just not going to do good. If all the people that you're playing with, they're all wanting to win, they're all good mood, etc. You're going to win more than if you're not, okay? If you're all like, oh, I can't bother to play the game, etc, etc. You're just not going to be in the right mindset to win games because you just you just can't be bothered you just can't be bothered i just this happens a lot with myself i'll jump on the game and i just don't want to play the game and i'll just do poorly because i'm not having fun if you're going like oh and eight you're being passionate with it you're just having a bad game like a lot of times with my team we're like oh, okay we need to get a passionate five stack on we want to win games if we're not passionate we're not going to win games because we're mentally just not prepared for it like when we was on today we had like what a six win streak i'd say it's not crazy but each game that we won it was like four nil four one you're not gonna win the games if you're just being like really depressed and just like blaming your team etc if you're in the wrong just know when you're in the wrong just i get understanding blaming your team but just don't always blame your team because it puts your team down as well if you're blaming the jaeger main for example because he didn't put his ADS in this spot and you wanted it in this spot. If he put it in this spot, but you wanted it in a different spot and you didn't tell him, that's not his fault, that's your fault. If you didn't tell the Jaeger to put an ADS somewhere and you're moaning that it, his ADS is somewhere, that's your fault. Number three, we kind of touched on this subject a little bit, is site setups and callouts. You want to learn the site setups and you want to learn the callouts. If you're given a callout for stairs, okay, you're playing on Oregon in dorms okay there's two two lots of stairs there's white stairs and there's armory stairs you need to know the difference between the stairs because if if i just if i'm playing kids and someone says stairs i don't know what stairs they could come up white stairs they could come up armory stairs or be in armory hallway they, there's two lots of stairs and that could change that could be life or death i could then look it over to white to white stairs and be holding that angle but then the guy is armory let's just say book Book is then armory, push it into trophy, and then let's just say he goes through rotate. Okay, let's just say he goes through attic rotate, and then now he's now he's in kids. I'm behind the bunk beds, holding white because my teammate called white stairs, but book just came through armory. Does that make sense? You want to learn the call outs, each little call out. I know it is it might be annoying to learn, but if you generally want to win more games with a five stack, you need to learn the call outs. Same with site setups. So if you're just like not setting up site, okay, then what are you doing? If you're playing warden, okay. I know it's typical that most warden mains now 
don't actually reinforce. But if you're playing Warden, you haven't got nothing to do. Reinforce. If you're playing a Zami, you have that time where your basically your gadget is having to charge up. Reinforce. Make rotates. Same with Legion. And why am I? Your gadget has to charge up. So there's no excuse on why you shouldn't be reinforcing. In my head, in my opinion, the main people that should be reinforcing and making rotates is Legion, Wamai, Azami, and Warden. Them, them ops there, their abilities have to charge up. So there is no reason why they should not be reinforcing. They're the main ones in my head that should be reinforcing. Also, another thing with site setups, as I see a lot of gold players try and do and site setups that champs or pro league players do. Now, this right here will just not work in your lobbies. If you're gold or silver or plat, it's basically not champ or pro league level, okay? You're doing strats that pro leagues do, pro players and champs do, but you're not against that, that type of player. Now, yes, you're probably thinking, oh, it can still work because they don't know how to attack it. But you're play, you're gonna be playing a site and how you expect the attackers, so the good players, to play. Now, a lot of times is when when I play and we start playing bad players, it's hard to, to play against because they're really unpredictable. When you play at a certain level for so long, for example, people that I play with, all champs. Um, obviously, I'm down at the moment, but all we're all champ level. Okay, we we'll all end up hitting champ by the end of the season. So we're used to playing at that level. Now, if I jump on my Smurf account that is currently, I think it's like Copper 2 or Copper 3, and normally I'll just get random players. I'll just do it LFG because when well, I want to play Siege, but none of my stack is on, so I'm not going to jump on my main and just ruin my win loss and just basically ruin my ELO. I'll jump on my Smurf just to play to have fun. This is a very different type of play style and they are very unpredictable to kind of play against. So a lot of times I have to dumb down you could say a bit because they are very unpredictable and comparing it to champ level players is a very different play style that people play so don't be doing champ level strats and pro level pro level strats in like gold lobbies and silver lobbies etc because it's just not going to work number four is playing off your team and playing with your team so what i mean by this is stop like solo pushing and getting yourself killed because what can happen as a defender is they can just pick you off one by one okay now if you play with someone let's say um i play i'm defender and i'm playing with valk okay we're roman right now if valk dies if they unless they use a suppressor i then know where they, they are because of their bullet trails okay so I know where they are because the bullet trail again unless they're using a suppressor but let's say for this state of the video that they're not they're using flash rider okay I know where they are because of the bullet trails and my teammate will call it so if I get the refrag what it puts us back to even okay so don't just play solo all the time and just rush on your own or play on your own because it can really mess you up unless you're a really good player and the defender is like a roman as a defender like cav don't be playing with a cav as a defender that's just stupid but if you're try and play in the vicinity of an area try and play in an area where you can get the refrag so let's say cav is interrogating someone a lot of times as an attacker you're going to try and stop that cav from interrogating so try and play a little bit closer to that cav so then if Cav dies, the attacker is then going to pick up the teammate and you can get possibly get them bo both of them kills, making it a little bit better for the team. It is now, you've took out two enemies and you're one man down. So try and play for the refrags when you're playing with your team. Now playing off your team, now this is what I mean by basically your teammate dies but you're not near him. You should then know mentally that the your teammate has died over there. So there's going to be most likely someone over in that area. Okay. So you should then know. Right, okay. So let's just say Oregon bottom floor. Your teammate dies in bunker. You should then know he's either blue barrels or he's on pillar. You came down the stairs. He is then on pillar. He took him out, etc. Depending on the location. But you should know really that if your teammate dies, 
that there should be someone in that vicinity. I've seen a lot of people do this before and they just don't pay attention. The teammate dies and then they're like, right, okay, well, I, I don't know what to do. My teammate died, I can't do anything. I didn't know where he was, right? Because my teammate died, I didn't know where he was. Now, because I use a solo queue a lot, I kind of learnt this naturally, if that makes sense. So, because I solo queued a lot, I learned this naturally. And yeah, to try and play off your team's dead bodies. When you're playing with your team, try and play for the refrags. And yeah, that's it's a really good tip that I highly recommend doing and using. Number five, now this is going to be an interesting one for my console players, is playing for the objective. Playing for the object objective. Rainbow Six Siege is not team deathmatch it is a search and destroy game mode with one life okay yes there's going to be gunfights in it but your main objective as an attacker is planting the bomb now multiple times with the people i play with is they don't realize they have the diffuser and they're swinging out and i'm literally going plant the bomb plant the bomb multiple times they start planting the bomb but planting the bomb as an attacker is the first thing you want to be doing the main thing you don't want to be playing for kills you want to be playing for the objective getting the kills should be the second thing the main thing is planting the bomb as a defender you're wanting to stop the plant play by the time so uh, today it was actually playing with one of the people i do play with uh, nl amaru but basically was on villa won trophy and he was a 3v1 uh, he was the last one alive it was a 3v1 situation he took out two of them and it was a 1v1 situation and there's about i'll say about 10 seconds he's not swinging this uh player again i don't know who the operator was it was quite a while ago he wasn't swinging this operator he was playing it by time holding that angle and then it got to like three seconds he just prone because there's no point of him having to swing there's either two things this player is going to have to do is either having to swing the uh, Goyo, what is Amaru, he's having, to, having to swing the Goyo or he's having to plant the bomb. Now with three seconds down on the time, if he starts planting the bomb, that is a free kill for Goyo and a free round. If he swings the Goyo, most likely because Goyo is prone, that the other player is not going to have their crosshair placement prone on the floor where his position was. So as a defender, you want him to play by time and play and just basically stop the defuse that is your main objective not trying to get kills not trying to just frag out you're wanting to play for objective i know it is stupid to say but play for objective and then with an attacker your main objective is planting the bomb getting into sight you obviously having to kill a couple of player people to get into sight but you wanted to plant the bomb as soon as you're inside and you're safe plant the bomb as soon as possible and then what you want to do when you have planted is defend that bomb okay all the defenders have to do is defuse it if you all die they still have to defuse it waste as much time as you possibly can so for example if you're bravo with echo if you're bravo and you've had to echo cam then that's just perfect because all you have to do is just hide behind somewhere use an echo cam and then just waste his time or put claymores down or gridlocks nomad jabs is just waste as much time as possible once you've planted you don't need to be swinging everything once you've planted the bomb because again if you die they still can just defuse the bomb you, you want to still be alive when you have planted the bomb but yeah they are my five tips on how you can win more games if you did enjoy make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel it will be very much appreciated if you do want to know on how you can get more kills and get your kd higher i do have a little annotation top right of the screen that will send you to a video that i recently did on how you can get a better kd so yeah, also going to be streaming over on Twitch. Link will be in the description to that. And yeah, see you guys later.